was about to commence. These farmers then started to notice that their soybean crops were not developing at the rate that was commensurate to what these certified seeds should have produced. We then were able to have some of these seeds certified or at least inspected. And we had Stein, we called Stein and talked to some of the corporate individuals there in Adel, uh, Iowa. They in turn sent some of their agronomists to the fields. And one of the first things that the agronomists admitted to is that yes, quote unquote, you all have a yield problem. The farmers knew that they had a yield problem. Unfortunately, Stein did not take it upon him itself to have any of these seeds certified, these allegedly certified seeds uh, tested. So we then, on behalf of our members, sent some of these samples to the Mississippi State University uh, Laboratory and they tested these seeds, or at least tested the harvested seeds, and those seeds, those germination tests, came back with a germination of 0%. What we're saying today is that the few remaining black farmers who have survived uh, drought, who have survived tariffs, who have survived all kinds of natural disasters, floods, and other uh, natural disasters are now finding themselves having to deal with the gauntlet of systemic racism by not only the Department of Agriculture, but now seed manufacturers, seed breeders, chemical manufacturers who are now recognizing and have recognized their seeds and are targeting those seeds to or toward the operations of the remaining black farmers. We know that when the GMO technology was introduced to this country several years ago, there was indeed an outcry. People were complaining then that the genetically modified seed companies would eventually take control of the seed market and consequently prevent individuals, small farmers, gardeners, from being able to use the seeds that Mother Nature and God supply. Genetically modified seeds are basically a process where God has been taken out of the equation. Mother Nature has been taken out of the equation. The problem today is that the expenses associated with farming are such, so the argument went, as it were, by the uh, manufacturers of genetically modified seed, is they could guarantee high yields. They could guarantee that the world food supply would be increased and that farmers who were not using their seeds were basically producing lower yields. So they convinced the government, they convinced Congress to allow them to patent what we call particular traits. In other words, if a soybean were an automobile or a vehicle, Stein is the manufacturer of the engine under the hood. They create the genetics that will allow that seeds to experience what analogously we would call additional horsepower. Horsepower in this particular case, if Mother Nature said that the soybean yield would be basically 20 to 25 bushels per acre. Stein and other genetic modified producers can say, yeah, we can increase those yields to 50, 60, and 70 bushels per acre. The problem for black farmers is that because of the increase in equipment, now when tractors, or before when tractors were $10,000, the farmers could afford to use the seeds that Mother Nature supplied they could break even with 20 bushels per acre. But once the tractor manufacturers, the chemical manufacturers got into the equation, tractor expenses went from $10,000 to a $300,000 tractor. Therefore, the farmer cannot break even now unless they use the genetically modified seeds because their expenses are so high, they wouldn't be able to repay their loans. But what is going on with black farmers, they are now a victim of what we call double whammy. They're having difficulty getting a loan to purchase seeds and equipment in the first place because of the discrimination that was alleged by USDA earlier. Now those few remaining individuals who are able to get a loan 
are experiencing now guaranteed disaster because the seeds that they are purchasing that would otherwise create the cash flow to service the debt associated with the high cost of farming now, they are not able to experience those high yields. So they are borrowing money for debt associated with 60 and 70 bushel soybean yields when in fact they are receiving fake seeds and not only are they making less than what Mother Nature would have guaranteed them, now they are making even less. The report that came back from the uh, Mississippi State University showed that those seeds had what is called a zero germination. That is to say if you plant 100 seeds at a minimum a, a minimum germination should be 80, 85, 90, 95% of those 100 seeds should sprout. They should grow. In this particular case, we sent them a sample of some of the harvested seeds from Stein Seed Companies. They planted 100 of those seeds and zero of those seeds germinated. So here again, the proof is in the pudding. It's not only that these farmers are now crying wolf again, they are continually being the victims of systemic discrimination. Here 